We're getting a little bit closer to our feathered friends and I'm feeling a little bit braver. I'm here with Daniel, the owner of Uptown Birds, and he has a little friend to introduce us to. And who is this? This is Rosie, a oh. rose-breasted cockatoo. These guys are from Australia. And did she put her little head up because she's she's happy or because oh, she's scared? He is actually oh, interested. <laughs> interested in the mic. Um, and he's doing a lot of chattering here. They can speak. It's They're not the best mimics, so it's not always that clear. So it's a lot of garbled sounds, okay. as he's doing right now. <laughs> Um, but they are really fun. They're playful. They're extremely affectionate birds. Um, it's probably one of the few birds that would sit on their back for a really long period of time, let you toss them around. So wow. This is super sweet. And how old is Rosie? Rosie's a year old. A year old. So she's yep. still a baby. Still essentially a baby. These guys, you would, you would expect these guys to okay. live around 40 years, and yes, is the full size. Um, birds have to attain their adult size uh, at a very young age, otherwise they'll be predator or prey for predators out in the wild. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the store. You've been here for two years, and what um, what kind of is like the concept behind this uh, this pet shop? All right. Well, we set it up wanting to have a unique place that was dedicated to exotic animals because there's not many places available like that. Um, and they carry mainly the premium products. Uh, most of the stuff that we have here, it's all stuff that I handpicked um, because of the quality of it, um, the fact that most of it is from the U.S. Um, and for the most part, everything here is either organic or like a homeopathic type of item. Um, it goes from the food on down, and then when it comes to the animals that we have, pretty much everything we have except for a few of the fish are all captive raised, meaning that they weren't captured from the wild. Uh, all the birds, we actually raise them ourselves here in the store, um, so we have their parents on premise. Would you recommend people to go with a captive raised bird over like a, a wild a absolutely. I, not only is it, there's no need at this point to take a bird from the wild um, since they are, are raised in captivity so readily nowadays, um, but it, just the effect that it has on wild populations, it, it's unfair. Do you breed birds here and what is that process like? I, well, I, just like with anyone, I, the, the mood has to be right. Uh, <laughs> many of the birds, they're seasonal breeders, so in the wild, whatever season they normally would breed in is when they would try to reproduce in captivity. But the setting has to be just right for them um, when it comes. So you light some candles, you get some, some candles or some artificial, some sunlight. organic bird <laughs> juice out. Yep. Uh, most of them will only breed whenever the food is more plentiful than others. So you want to really give out the bounty of food at that time because um, they they want to know that they're going to be able to feed their chicks with. And then do um, when the babies are born, do they stay with the the parents in like a, the same cage, or are they taken? Up Right. Away from that. So what we do, um, since we do want them to be pet birds, most of them, we do have some that go to different um, organizations that actually are just doing like captive rearing for population. Um, but the ones that are going to be destined as pets, we let the parents rear them for about a week, week and a half, and then we pull them and we start hand feeding them. That way they imprint with people and they're, they're excellent pets at that point. Do you have any babies at this time? Or? I do. Yep. And if you want to see them, we can definitely take a look. We want to see the babies. We are in for a birdie tweet, treat, should we say. We have some baby birds. Oh my god. All right. And what kind of birds are these? This is a greater Vasa parrot. Uh, this one is about two and a half weeks old. And these guys are from Madagascar, so they are endangered, just like everything else from Madagascar. Um, not very common in captivity. And there are very few people in the United States that actually have them. They're, they're small right now, but as a full-grown adult, it's going to be about 24 inches long. Um, a nice big black bird. It's one of the only black parrots. And um, this little baby's parents were here in the store. Yes. Yes, they are. We actually have 12 Vasa parrots here total um, for a breeding colony. And they're, they're an interesting species because the females, um, most parrot species are very monogamous. Vasa parrots, the females are not. Um, they prefer to have two men around uh, to, to meet their needs. They're very demanding. Wow, it's a bird right up my alley. So what, um, how do you feed and take care of this like little baby bird before she can get in the cage and be on her own? Yep. These guys at this age, we feed them with a syringe, a uh, specialized formula that's made just for baby birds. Um, they, at this age, eating about every four hours and that's throughout the night as well. 
So, it's so like much like a regular human baby. Just like a human baby. Um, this baby was actually incubated. Um, its egg was incubated and hatched in an incubator rather than the parents hatching it out because the mother broke the first egg that she laid. So rather than having more broken ones, we pulled it, incubated it, and had to feed this baby from day one. At that point, it was getting fed about every 30 minutes around the clock. Wow. How many, um, how many babies does a bird have, one at a time? or? It depends on the species. Some species will only have one baby every few years, and then other species can have up to seven in one clutch. Does she have any brothers or sisters? She does. She has one younger sibling that's a week younger, um, and I can bring that one up in one second. Okay. She kind of looks like a dinosaur, right? Or no? Oh my god! So, the AV birds grow really fast, as you can tell. There's a huge difference between these two, and it's only one week in age apart. Oh wow, and do they have like, do they know that they're related? Are they like buddies? They, they sleep together, um, they, they do comfort with each other. So, and I, I, you know, there have been studies done as far as pheromones and everything, and I think families do recognize each other because um, most young siblings won't try to interbreed when they get to the age because they know who their siblings are. Can, um, can this, the bigger one, can she fly at this point or no, not yet? Not yet. Not yet. We have very underdeveloped wings. Um, what you're seeing here, are these straw-like structures are called pin feathers, and that's where there's still blood supply going into it and developing the actual feather structure that we're used to seeing. Wow, it's such a huge change from just one week as far as the growth and development. And then do you have them in like incubators back there or under like heat lamps or something? Um, these guys, because they're, they're old enough now, they can regulate their own body temperature. So they just get kept in a, a container that's partially covered on the top and the, it maintains their temperature pretty well. But we do have a lot of specialized equipment for them and they're called brooders, um, which is what you keep the baby birds in. And that keeps temperature at a set temperature that you set it. Um, as well as the humidity. And why is she, is that the way she kind of like familiarizes herself with bird fight? With the environment, like that biting kind of like tasting? Uh, actually, it's trying to get food from the other one. Oh. Yeah, they're not quite ready to eat yet. Um, they still have a little bit of food left in them, which you can see from this little protrusion they have right here. Oh, okay. um, that's an extension of their esophagus called the crop, and it's basically a food storage area. So we don't feed them until that gets empty. And who stays in the store all night feeding these birds? These guys go home with me at night. <laughs> that one can't even like lift her head, huh? Oh. Yeah, so oh my God. Okay, so this is Katie. <laughs> Daniel. <laughs> This is Katie for more, um, I hope you had a good visit. For so this is Katie with Tangerine Living. I have a new little friend who uh, Daniel promises is a vegetarian and is not gonna bite my neck open right now. So come to Uptown Birds, check it out. I hope you had a good time on our visit. There's a lot of cool stuff here, a lot of cool animals, a great staff, super friendly and informative. Check out uptownbirds.com for more information. You can visit them on 86th and Amsterdam.